The biggest mistake skinny fat guys make is thinking they have to choose between bulking and cutting. And so many years ago at my starting point, like many other skinny fat guys, I wanted to get jacked. So I tried the traditional approaches, what everyone else preached. You know, things like tracking calories and doing dedicated bulking and cutting phases. And that just led to me getting nowhere for many years. So I was confused, I didn't know what to do. And then fast forward to many years later, I had nothing to show for, for many years of bulking and cutting. So I was like, something needed to change. Uh, this traditional approach isn't working. So I decided to ditch calorie counting. I started eating the right foods, focusing on a, a proper diet, and I started training correctly. And so that's when I started recomping, AKA building muscle and losing fat. And so now, exactly one year from the previous photo, I've built muscle and lost significant amounts of muscle, uh, lost significant amounts of body fat at the same time while staying lean year round while getting more jacked. And funnily enough, I actually weigh roughly the same in all three photos. And this is done without counting any calories while training the least I've ever trained. So I spend less than two hours training a week in the gym right now. So coming up in this video, we're gonna go over how you can make an even faster transformation than me, how you can fix your skinny fat body in less than a year, why it's possible to build significant muscle mass while getting leaner, and exactly how you should train and diet to ensure that you look leaner without worrying about appearing skinnier. So firstly, for context, if you're unaware, skinny fat is essentially just a term to describe someone who is, they don't have much muscle mass, so that's where the term skinny comes from, but they have significant amounts of body fat, and that's where the fat part comes in. So you combine those two together, you get skinny fat. You get someone who, when they have a t-shirt on, they look skinny, they don't look like they lift, but then you take the shirt off and they look quite chubby, quite fat. And people take the wrong approach to fixing skinny fat. They think it's binary. There is only one, you have to take one path or the other, that you have to gain muscle or lose fat. And they do this by focusing on extreme calorie surpluses or extreme calorie deficits. And this just results in them yo-yoing from bulking and then getting too fat. So then they're like, oh, I'm, I'm stopping my bulk. And then they switch to a cutting phase and then they feel too skinny, and then they just go back and forth, and it leads to a perpetual cycle of getting nowhere. And that just leaves them stuck with a physique that has barely any muscle and a lot of body fat, like these dudes. Sorry if this is you, I just Googled skinny fat. <laughs> so the optimal approach is to instead focus on body recomposition, which is building muscle and losing fat at the same time without tracking calories, so that your physique can look better week by week. You're just constantly improving, constantly getting that positive feedback loop. Instead of having to get extremely fat or extremely skinny, you just get the best of both worlds. So with that out of the way, let's go into Recomp 101, everything you need to know to fix skinny fat. So first I wanna go over why it's possible. There is an age old belief that you cannot build muscle and lose fat at the same time unless you're on anabolic steroids. Uh, but this has long since been disproven. Many people can build muscle and lose fat at the same time, like 95% of people. In fact, it is actually the optimal approach. And so it's possible because firstly, you have, if you're skinny fat, you have a lot of excess body fat on your body. And that body fat is all it is is stored calories. So these calories can be used as fuel for muscle building. So you don't need to be in a surplus to build muscle. You, you actually have a surplus on your body. So you don't need to eat in a surplus. That's the first reason. Secondly, if you're skinny fat, you're probably pretty weak and you have lots of room to get stronger. So if you just progressive overload in the gym, AKA get stronger, add weight, add reps to the bar, you will get stronger, which will in turn result in more muscle. 
regardless of if you're in a calorie deficit or not. Thirdly, if you're skinny fat, you're probably not eating a lot of protein. So as you eat more protein, you will be stimulating muscle protein synthesis more, meaning giving your, opportun giving your body the opportunity to build more muscle. Next, it's possible because you've never trained hard slash properly in your life. Like if you're skinny fat, you've obviously not very experienced in the gym. Like you don't really know what you're doing. Um, you're probably just going about your sets in a very chill manner. Um, so once you actually train properly, as we'll discuss later, it will be easy for you to pack on muscle. Just simple. And lastly, if you're skinny fat, it is very likely that your hormone profile sucks. You probably have the testosterone of a 10 year old girl. So as you start eating better and you start training hard, you have better hormonal health, which means more testosterone, which means it is easier to build muscle and lose fat. So I hope that has convinced you on why it is possible. Let's go into training. There's SpongeBob doing some lifts. So the main premise of training is to focus on progressive overload, which just means adding weights and reps every session. As long as you can focus on adding weights or reps every session to the bar or to the machine, whatever your lift you're doing, that will ensure you're getting stronger and you can build muscle. My method of trying to do that, my preferred method is High intensity training, popularized by Mike Mensah, Dorian Yates, etc. Um, this is essentially just a very hard, intense way of training. So you only train one set to failure each exercise, which is a lot less than what most people, most people do. Only two to three exercises per muscle group. Train each muscle group once a week, and you're only in the gym for 30 minutes three times a week. That's like a quick summary of high intensity training. I'm not going to go too in depth into it. Um, I just made a video on high intensity training. Uh, you can check that out after this video if you're interested in that. I will link it somewhere as well. So that's training. Uh, next core pillar of recomping is diet, arguably the most important. So the first thing I want to focus on is a high protein diet. So you want to get one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Reason being because protein has a very high thermic effect of food. Thermic effect of food meaning the amount of energy it takes your body to digest the food. It is roughly about 20 to 30% for protein. So let's say you ingest 100 calories of protein. Roughly 20 to 30 calories will be spent just trying to digest the food. So net net, you're only consuming 70 to 80 calories. So that makes it very hard to overeat. Which leads on to the next point. Protein is very satiating. It's very hard to overeat. Your body can take in some protein and then it gets full very quickly. Like it's hard to overeat steak or chicken breast. Thirdly, we spoke about this before, but protein is very good for muscle protein synthesis. So assuming you're training correctly, forcing yourself to push in the gym, you will be building muscle as well, as long as you eat a high protein diet. And lastly, a high protein diet is muscle sparing. Since we are in a deficit, you might be scared that you might lose muscle, but as long as you're training hard and you're eating plenty of protein, your muscle will be spared in a deficit. So what do we eat if you wanna fix skinny fat? I think the optimal diet to fix skinny fat is just meat, eggs, fruit, and veg. Really fucking simple. Just whole nutrient dense foods. The reason being is because obviously these are packed full of nutrients, um, high protein, low to moderate carb. And most importantly, you can eat until you are satisfied with these foods. It is ridiculously hard to overeat. Like no one's gonna get fat just eating these because you just can't overeat these kind of foods. And that means you don't have to count calories. You can eat as much as you want until you are satisfied without counting calories. On the other hand, foods you want to avoid are all processed junk foods. So pretty much anything that comes in a packet and has like a million things on the ingredients list. 
You want to also avoid grains like rice, bread, pasta, etc., things like that. And then sugars, obviously, cookies, ice cream, chocolates, stuff like that. Simply because all these things, it is impossible to eat these things until you are satisfied. Like you can just eat these foods endlessly and you'll go way over your calories. So unless you want to get fat, just I would avoid eating these foods. And lastly on diet, I just want to touch on intermittent fasting. So fasting just means not eating for a period of the day. First reason this is effective is because obviously if you are having days, periods of the day where you're not eating, generally that leads to a lower caloric intake, which is what we want if we want to lose fat. Uh, but secondly, and probably more important is that intermittent fasting, giving your body a break from eating allows you to lower your insulin levels. And what that does is it increases your insulin sensitivity. And when your sensitivity to insulin is increased, you have better nutrient partitioning. Essentially meaning when you do give your body nutrients like protein, your body is better at utilizing it. It knows where to put it in different places. So you can more effectively build muscle as opposed to just wasting the nutrients. And secondly, a lower insulin levels allows your body to tap into its stored body fat for energy. So if you're skinny fat, you have lots of body fat on your energy, lots of excess, excess calories for you to use. And if you just lower your insulin levels by taking breaks from eating throughout the day or having longer periods of not eating in your day, that will allow your body to tap into those stores. So how do you get into fasting? So right now you're probably eating all day, which isn't ideal. Uh, so the next best thing you can do is go to a 12-12, meaning you fast for 12 hours and then you eat for 12 hours. Once you get comfortable with that, you can then move on to a 16-8. So it's fasting for 16 hours and then eating within only eight hours. Then you can go 18-6 and 24. But honestly, like doing OMAD once a week, OMAD, mean, OMAD meaning one meal a day, these are quite extreme, you don't really need to do these. Like right now, I'm only doing OMAD probably once a week. Um, but a lot of people have great success just sticking around this area, like 16-8, 18-6, just eating two big meals a day. You'll be absolutely fine. Next is activity. So I'm not really a big fan of like quote unquote cardio. I just think you should get your steps up. Um, everyone's a bit different depending on your lifestyle, your job. So some people might already have a quite high step count. So as a starting point, I would just try and add 5,000 steps to your current daily average. Um, it's pretty simple to add 5,000. You can just go for a walk after a meal, walk after lunch, walk after dinner. Um, you can incorporate walks as soon as you wake up. You can just, like, it's so simple. Like 5,000 steps, anyone can add 5,000 steps. Come on. And then adjust accordingly. So we will go further into this later, but if you're, let's say you're losing weight too quickly, you can just walk less. Or if you're not losing enough fat, you can walk a bit more. And next I want to touch on sleep. So sleep is a really underrated part of recomping your body. All the hard work is done during the sleep, not during the day. Yes, you put in the work during the day, but the time you're sleeping is when your body is actually repairing itself. It's when it's building muscle. It's when it's building muscle. It's when it's burning fat. So ideally, you want to get seven to nine hours every night. This is different for everyone. Some people just function better on seven. Some people need nine. Find what you feel good on. Uh, but just some general sleep tips. Firstly, activity. So you want to be getting your steps, like I spoke about before. Uh, but this is good for your sleep because you want to give your body a reason to want to rest. You want to give it a reason to want to replenish itself. If you're not moving around all day, like you're just not going to want to sleep. So you need to be active. You need to be getting outside, getting some steps in. No screens before bed. You've probably heard this a million times. Pretty basic. Uh, you can use blue locking glasses if you really want to look at screens before bed. 
Get as much sunlight as you can during the day so your body can regulate its melatonin release. Sleep in a cool, quiet and dark room. Pretty straightforward. And then lastly, just limit your caffeine intake after about midday. Lastly, I just want to touch on progress. So making progress is really simple when you're recomping. So firstly, a scale is essentially worthless when you're recomping. Your weight can stay the same or even go up or go down uh, while you look leaner, while your pants fit looser, your arm sleeves and your chest could feel tighter. So a scale isn't a good measure. Like, like I said earlier, I'm roughly like 72 to 74 kilograms in all of these photos. Like my weight barely changes year round while my body composition changes because you are building muscle and losing fat at the same time. So a better measure of progress is the mirror or progress pictures. These should be your main progress trackers. And so ideally you wanna take photos once a week and just compare them week by week. And so I've got a simple flow chart here to diagnose if you're not making the right progress. So if you are not looking leaner week by week, there are a few things you can do. Number one is play around with your fasting window like we spoke about before. You can go from 12, 12, 16, 8, 18, 6, 20 to 4, even one meal a day if you want to, but that's quite extreme. You probably won't need to do that. Next thing you can play around with is removing certain foods. So you should have already removed grains, all sorts of grains and sugars. Uh, but lastly, you can also remove high carb fruits. Um, so like apples, bananas, mangoes, all these things. And essentially just do a keto slash carnivore approach with the exception being like low carb fruits and veg, things like berries, um, avocado, leafy greens, things like that. And lastly, the last thing you can play around with is like we spoke about before, increasing your step count. So um, bump it up one to 2K every week, see how you go from there, adjust accordingly. Next part of diagnosing your progress is if you are not looking more muscular week by week in your photos, first thing I'd have to ask is, are you training hard enough? Are you pushing your sets to the point where if someone had a gun to your head and told you to do another rep, you would not be able to do another rep? That's how hard you need to be training if you really want to make gains, especially in a deficit. Next, are you giving your body enough rest slash sleep? Are you getting your seven to nine hours? Are you feeling rejuvenated and recovered in the mornings? Next thing I would ask is, are you focusing on progressive overload? So are you adding weight or reps to the bar every single week, every single session? If you're not, then you're not making progress. It's simple as that. And then lastly, are you eating enough protein? A gram per pound of body weight like we spoke about before. And that's it. If you just do those, there is no way that you fail. It is that fucking simple. Uh, so that's pretty much everything. I'll just put it all together in a quick recap here for you. How to fix skinny fat 101. So we fix it by building muscle and losing fat at the same time. We fix our diet by cutting out all processed foods, grains and sugars. We just eat whole nutrient dense foods. Most of your diet should be meat, eggs, fruit, and veg. Very simple. Aim to get a gram of protein per pound of body weight. Other than that, you don't really need to track anything. Our training should be high intensity training with a focus on progressive overload. You wanna increase your baseline steps. 10,000 steps is a good number to aim for, but you can adjust accordingly depending on how you're progressing week by week. Take your progress pictures every week, compare, adjust accordingly, make adjustments like we spoke about. And then lastly, sleep seven to nine hours every night. So that is everything. That is how you fix skinny fat by recomping. Hope you've enjoyed that video. I hope that was informative. Uh, if you want to go deeper into my approach to high intensity training, um, I'll leave a link somewhere on the screen below. Uh, that will be a 20 minute in-depth video on my approach to training. Cheers.